Okay, get started. Hello everyone, I'm Dong Dong, a PhD student from Columbia University. Today I'm going to talk about a learning-based father called NUS. NUS is based on a neural network model and performs efficient gradient guiding mutation. Fuzzing is becoming a popular way to find software vulnerabilities. In the last 10 years, the number of fuzzing paper has been growing a lot. Many researchers are trying to make fuzzer more efficient. However, almost all of them are variants of the same design, evolutionary fuzzing. Evolutionary fuzzing starts with the initial seed. Then through random mutation, it generates multiple child seed. Then select the one with the most promising result as the initial seed for the next round. Evolution techniques are easy to implement and have shown significant promise, but it is not very efficient. Since the random mutation, uh, since the random mutation not very effective and wastes a lot of mutation without valid guidance, they tend to get stuck after a while running. In practice, it is hard to find scalable and adaptive heuristic for guiding mutations. Many prior work try to address this limitation in different way, but without changing the fundamental fuzzing architecture. In this work, we consider fuzzing from a new perspective, an optimization problem. That is to find a set of X to maximize the number of sum shown here. Capital X represent all possible input space. Lowercase x indicate a program input, and fx denotes the number of bugs yielded by execution of specified input. Most of the input was simply written zero on fx, since bugs are hard to find and only can be triggered by a small number of rear edges, a rear inputs. Cx is a sample function to generate k inputs restricted by fuzzing budget from input space. A fuzzing campaign often has a resource limit, such as time budget and competition budget. Thus, it can only be generate a fixed number of mutations within this budget. And the aim of such optimization is to find a set of inputs which uncover the maximum number of bugs within the fixed resource budget. However, such function fx is ill-behaved because it is discrete and mostly contain a lot of flat plateau and sharp transitions make it really hard to optimize efficiently. Function fx is actually an impulse function and has two spikes, x1 and x2. Recall that fx represents the number, number of bugs found by a particular input. From the graph, we can see that for the target program, only two inputs can yield abnormal budget behavior while other inputs just trigger normal behavior and yield no bugs. As for any sample function Cx, it will be extremely hard to generate k inputs which happen to hit x1 and x2. So to solve this problem, modern fathers turn to an easier target, edge coverage, rather than number of bugs, simply because in practice, the more edge a fuzzer can explore, the more likely it can uncover a bug. We define gx as the number of edges taken during execution of input on target program. And the object function right now change to maximize the total number of edges by finding an optimal set of input x. Now we have gx, a step function representing edge coverage Many inputs have some edge coverage. Compared with prior one, this function gx is easier to optimize, since it contains more states and more transitions between them. Evolutionary technique is a popular way to optimize the function gx to achieve the maximized edge coverage. Here is an example. Evolutionary optimization starts from the initial set say 0.1, then perform a random mutation. Since the random mutation has no any valid guidance, the resulting mutant can be any point and only depends on luck to hit any interest region. Then it reach 0.2 and check whether it introduce any new edge coverage. If it doesn't, the initial state still stay at 0.1. 
Then reach 0.3, no edge coverage. Reach 0.4, this time it's lucky. It find new edge coverage. So the seed changed to 0.4. However, since the random mutation can easily cause the new input to jump back into no gain region, like this, we could have 0.5. Note that this example is a simplified one-dimension input space. While in the real-world cases, the input can have as large as total input length dimension, where random mutation is not efficient. To provide more guidance in mutation, we propose a new approach, gradient-guided optimization. It has two steps. First, we smooth approximate the objective function. Second, we compute gradient of the smooth function we just approximated, and further can perform efficient gradient-guiding mutation. Assuming somehow, magically, we could obtain a smooth approximation of GX, like this. HX is a smooth approximation of GX. Then we compute gradient of HX to obtain promising direction and focus mutating on this direction. Similar to last example, we start from point one. Then we compute gradient, and then we came point two. Compute gradient, go to point three, then point four to point five. Following the gradient, we're approaching the spark error or the interest error and achieve higher edge coverage than evolutionary method. Gradient guide optimization seems pretty promising, but the problem is how do we smoothly approximate GX? While the object function, GX, has no explicit analytical form. Moreover, it is only accessible from a black box manner. That is, we can only get the output, that is the edge coverage, of GX through lightweight instrumentation of target program. According to universal approximation theorem, a single hidden layer neural network model can approximate any continuous function. Thus, the neural network is a natural fit to this task. Our solution is to use a neural network model to smooth approximate GX, and our learned function is HX. After obtaining the smooth approximation, then we perform gradient guiding mutation. The first question we want to ask is, why gradient guidance? Well, we compute gradient of edges with respect to input. The gradient represents the importance for every byte in the input. By choosing the input bytes with the largest gradient value, we can identify the critical parts. Then, what are the critical parts of input? Um, in reality, only a small fraction of input determine program branches. This small fraction of inputs are critical parts of input. How it works? Once we identify the critical parts of input, we can greatly reduce the searching space and focus mutating on this location, hence improve the fuzzing efficiency. Now let's look at the main idea of news. Given the program and fit the input, it will execute and trigger a corresponding path composed of a set of control flow edges. This set of control flow edges are program's branching behavior for the specified input. Then we train a neural network model at the smooth surrogate of program that will take in the same input and predict the same branching behavior. A nice property of this smooth surrogate is the differentiability. A program composed of the CPU instructions is not differentiable, while a neural network surrogate is differentiable. Thus, we could compute gradient of branches with respect to input and perform efficient gradient guiding mutations. Here, we will peek into the neural network model to explain more detail of the training. Program inputs, like a file or string, can be considered as a byte sequence, each byte with value range from 0 to 255. 
So we can represent the byte sequence with a numerical vector. Then we fit the input into target program and obtain the branching behavior. The branching behavior consists of set of control flow edges taken during dynamic execution. If edge is taken, it is marked as one, else it is marked with zero. We use program inputs as training data X and the edge bitmap as training label Y to train a neural network model which learn a function to predict the dynamic branching behavior for a given input. After training of the neural network model, a question pop up that how it generalized to unseen branches. Our observation is that most program inputs of real world program are highly structured. And this structure of input form at the critical parts of input. Program logic mainly focuses on the critical parts of input and parts them to trigger different program branches. Our solution is to identify critical parts of input from observed branches and use them to help explore unseen branches. In this graph, we show the overall design of nodes. Nodes start with a set of C coppers as initial training data. Then they use a neural network model to learn a smooth surrogate of target program. After the training, nodes compute gradient of edges with respect to input and perform efficient gradient guiding mutations. Further, we will keep the mutated inputs that cover new edges and add them into our training data set. Since the initial data set only cover partial program space, we keep refining our neural network model with incremental learning. Our evaluation consists of four parts, real world program, LavaM, and Dropper CGC data set, comparison with RN-based father, and performance of different model choice. We evaluate news on edge coverage against five state of the art father, including FL, CLI FL, Vazer, FLFAS, and FL Left Intel. The evaluations perform on 10 real world applications for 24 hours running, cover six popular file formats, including ELF binary, JPEG picture, PDF, XML, Zlib, and Hubbus font file. The results show that news can outperform all five father on 10 real world programs and achieve on average three times more edge coverage. Across 10 real world applications, we also measure the total number of bugs found by six father. There are total five types of bugs found on six programs, including auto memory bug, memory leak, assertion crash, integer overflow, and hippo flow. News find the most number of bugs and it detect all five bug types, including two new CVEs. We also report this bug to the developer and some of them have already been fixed in their latest version. LavaM and the DARPA CGC dataset are two fuzzy datasets based on magical word comparison. We run news on four LavaM program and 50 DARPA CGC binary against state of the fuzzers. News identify critical parts of input, which determine the magical checking branches, then perform local exhaustive searching to break them. So it can outperform state of the art fuzzers on LavaM and CGC. We also compare news with another learning-based father, RN-based father. It uses R model to learn critical parts of program inputs and filter out mutation, which do not touch the critical parts. We run news on four programs evaluated in their paper for one million fixed mutation and compare the edge coverage and training time. News achieve six times more edge coverage and 20 times less training time. In the end, we evaluate news on three different neural network settings, simple linear model, neural network model, and a neural network model with incremental learning on one million fixed mutation. The results show that news achieves the best performance with neural network plus incremental learning. Some takeaway of news. First, news is greedy information to identify critical parts of inputs. Second, it forks mutating on this location. Third, news runtime overhead is minimal because the neural network using news is a simple feedforward neural network model and only take one or two minutes to train on a GPU. 
Finally, we keep retraining our neural network model to find new critical locations. We open source nodes on GitHub. So thank you for your attention. That's a Q&A. Any questions? Please state your name and affiliation. Hi, Steele, Paolo Montesel from Politecnico of Milano. Um, just wondering if you try to like do some experiments on transfer learning, whether you can like apply a, the same model, like a pre-trained model on a different target program without like training from scratch. Uh, I'm sorry, do, do you mean you, you, we start from a small set of training data? No, 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 I mean, so if I understood correctly, uh -huh. you are focused, every time you start a fuzzing like campaign or something, yeah. You are basically focusing on a single target program and training on, on that. Have you tried to see whether there is some like transfer learning that might be happening so you can apply the same like uh, weight to start uh, a new fuzzing target? Uh huh. I mean, the, that's the question. That's the question. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I'm still didn't. So, our design the. We train a NUNA model to approximate program behavior yes. and use this NUNA model to guide fuzzing real world program not fuzzing no network. No, no, what I mean is, you are training on a single um, target program every time, right? Yeah. Okay, have you tried to see, like if you train on a- Oh, I see, you mean transfer learning. Yeah. Uh, that may not, uh, we didn't test that because the model is designed for learn from a specific program every okay. time. But for transfer learning, like in the computer vision error, the input is the same. Well, for different programs, the different file format, it's hard to transfer from to different file format. Yeah, but my, so I'm just saying that maybe, I'm not sure, but maybe it might work at some level because like still like file formats are different, but usually yeah. they're similar somehow. Like yeah, you it have a depends. Better and then just saying, thank you. I'm one of the authors, can I answer that question? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so just follow up to Dang Dang. Yes, there are similarities across file formats, right? We particularly have not tested that yet, but that'll be great to test. Just, yep, fair point. Thank you. Uh, hi, uh, great talk, uh, Hector from UC Santa Barbara. Uh, well, th uh, the question is when you are trying to, uh, uh, well, in the neural network of yours, uh, how do you like uh, limit the size of your output? Like there are Edge all this many uh, branches there. Yeah. Uh, do you have one for one neuron for each branch, or do you? Separate? Yeah, that's a great question. We actually do some optimization. We call uh, output branch output dimension reduction. Basically, what we we'll do is uh, we observe that, let's say we have 10 inputs, and times have 10 set of the control flow edges. While this 10 set of the control flow edges, there are some lean collinearity in machine learning, this is called collinearity. Basically, you have two features. I have the same uh, label across all your training data. Basically, you have 10 inputs, and for the one, lab one edges, all 10 inputs all taken or not taken. That means if you use that label, didn't carry any information because all your input had the same label for that. So we do a simple uh, dimension reduction by removing this collinearity in the output space and greatly reduce the edge edge. And in practice, around 2K or 5K total edge on real world programs. Okay, so, so do you have to like reassign different semantics meaning for each neural when you're retraining your model or when you're like fine tuning your model uh, along the fuzzing process? I mean, do you have to, uh, like, uh, after fine tuning your model, do you have to, like, uh, each neuron have a different mapping to different branches or they stay the same? Yeah, it, it will become a different mapping because for every time before we train it, we will do a output dimension reduction. Okay. Then the output label will change. Uh, okay, uh, and another question. Uh, can you comment on another uh, paper that's kind of similar to yours, uh, Angora, uh -huh. and uh, can you comment on your paper's difference from that one? I, I, uh, you are different, uh, but I just want to you hear mean The main on difference that. between news and Angora. Yeah. Uh, Angora is focused on, from my understanding, it's focused on put branches. It, it, is, it is start from the, it is start, let's say, it won't break a particular branches, and it will probe and do some input plus one or minus one of between the outputs and try to break a particular branches. While noise is learned uh, overall program, 
as a whole node network model. Every label of the node network model represents one branch. We do not explicitly model a particular branch. We model the whole program. The whole program composed of all the branches inside. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Then maybe let me ask a quick question. Uh, Niels Prover Stripe. I'm curious if you've looked at um, sort of the size of your neural network in comparison to the programs that you're applying it against. Presumably, programs with a large state space may require a larger model to learn. Have you looked at that at all? Uh, we, currently, our neural net model is a fixed length. We, we define the fixed length input size 8K bytes, and the total number of neurons inside is 2K number of neurons. And if the program increase larger, say the input length increase, then accordingly we should increase the, the number of the hidden layer in our neural model. But we didn't perform, didn't evaluate on the very, very large program yet, which is test on the 10 real world program. Okay, let's thank the speaker. Oh, one more, Giovanni, you have one question, quick. Hi, Giovanni Vigna from UCSB. I have a stupid question. You had a, uh, something to say for an input, this is the number of bugs that this input finds. What are situations when you find more than one? Uh, that could case is, uh, so at first we think that one input could find only one bug, since it, it just crashed. Yeah. Then we figure out, let's say, in some cases, some input would not cause crash. Uh, it has caused a crash, let's say it crashed buffer flow, but before that it may have the integer flow or some memory leak or something. That also happened, we also considered a bug. Okay. So we did thank not you. come out one. All right, let's thank the speaker. Thank you.